A session I was doing a couple of years back, we had about a group of about 10 um, young lads um, who really just didn't want to know what I had to say about hemorrhage control. Uh, they were just kind of messing around at the back of the class. Uh, it didn't really seem like they were listening. The week later to do the second session, I was thinking, oh, I really don't want to do this. And uh, I found all 10 of the lads back, um, kind of sat on the edge of the seat, uh, waiting, waiting for me. And no, no, after that session last week, we were walking through the park and one of, one of their friends was assaulted. Uh, we stabbed. Uh, they phoned an ambulance straight away. They were all taking their coats off, you know, putting pressure on the wound, keeping him warm. Um, and I'm sure when the paramedics turned up, they were quite shocked to actually see that. By teaching them about the consequences of knife crime, hopefully we steer them away from that kind of lifestyle as well. And um, one of the kids that I was out on Friday night, and one of my friends got stabbed, and he was able to do everything that we taught him, like the basic things, like apply pressure, um, phone an ambulance, um, and actually probably help to save his friend's life. And one of the first things at the start of the session, when you asked them, you know, what would you do if you'd been stabbed or your mate had been stabbed? All of them said, well, the majority of them say, I'd do a runner. Um, you know, we're not asking them to do any major operations on people, but basic things like applying pressure and phone ambulance um, is something that they can easily do, and obviously it really helps. We're not coming to preach to them, we just come as like young people to get involved, see what they know, and teach them to, to hopefully stay fine. You know, if somebody's scared, that's fine, but if they know what they what to do next, that's it, being prepared. That's the main thing we can, we, you know, we can help with, is being prepared, because you can be scared, you can be doing, you know, your resuscitation, for example, but doing something is better than just you know, standing there and not knowing what to do. And then, unfortunately, sometimes the case is that the person dies. I think one of our biggest messages that we tell them is that there's no safe place to stab somebody. And they all think differently when they first come. When they first attend, they, they've heard their friend's been stabbed in the leg or... And they think that they're going to live from that. You're just as likely to kill somebody if you, kill, if you stab them in the leg as you are if you stab them in the chest. And it's something that they don't necessarily realise. We say some of, some of the things we've witnessed maybe in hospital, uh, some of the things we might have seen in the A&E department that can be pretty gruesome, pretty nasty. Uh, and then we say, you know, have you guys seen anything, have you seen any shootings, any stabbings, anybody you know, severely unwell? And you'd be surprised at how many of them have. I'd say the vast majority of, of young offenders I've taught have witnessed a shooting or a stabbing. If you know, that opportunity arises, it's, it's nice to know that they, they would know what to do. So I think that's, that's, that's the best part of it.